But then uh, we jump a long way uh, into the Middle Ages, into um, the beginning of the 14th century, 1301, and uh, the English had a king called Edward I. His nickname was Longshanks, and many of you have seen Mel Gibson's uh, movie, uh, Braveheart, and there is uh, Longshanks, played by a great actor, Matt pa Patrick McGowan. But, <coughs> excuse me, before that he conquered Wales um, and um, built castles all over Wales. And the Welsh didn't like it, and they said, we want a prince, a prince of Wales. And he said, uh, and we want someone who doesn't speak any English, meaning we want a Welsh prince. Oh, I must keep using, we want a Cymric prince. I said, yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a prince who speaks no English. And he presented his baby son, his baby son. He said, yeah, he speaks no English. He's a baby, doesn't speak any, which is a, a, a shabby trick. And it happened that um, since then, the eldest son of the King of England is called the Prince of Wales, so that you get Prince Charles, Prince, Prince Harry, Prince William. The very first Prince of Wales became one of the most useless English kings, Edward II. He was just useless, useless. And uh, in Mel Gibson's movie, which is full of falsehood, but uh, he, he um, has the fate of being cuckolded by, um, by Braveheart in the form of Mel Gibson. Um, now, I think the Cymru accepted I don't think any of the princes of Wales have been really outstanding people. Um, well, Prince Charles, uh, Prince William, I, I like. He's, he's a good guy, but um, it's, it's, it, it, it is the result of a trick. I personally think that the Cymru should have an elected prince of their own, but uh, that's getting into politics now. But that's what happened. Um, all right. Uh, now... 1400, 1415, Owen Glyndwr, Owen Glyndwr, there's a name to remember, I'm going to repeat this, Owen Glyndwr. Mention him in the same breath as Diponogoro, Prince Diponogoro, he was a freedom fighter. He was a real Prince of Wales. He was fought, like Diponogoro, there are many um, parallels between the lives of these two um, heroes, freedom fighters. Uh, they were re reluctantly, the, the, the Dutch, you know, f forced Iponogoro into revolt. Um, Glyndur was a middle-aged gentleman. He was all right. He had his, 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 his uh, castles. He had his fish ponds and his barge, you know, very cultured, very cultured man. But uh, there was um, a not very nice English guy called Lord Grey who just kept insulting him and stealing his land. So he revolted. And uh, the Cymru, many of them, rose up against the English. And for 15 years, they fought a rebellion, very successful at the beginning. Um, he won many victories. But uh, it couldn't go on. The English was too powerful. And they had a, a leader who became eventually Henry V, if you've seen the, the movies about Agincourt, um, Shakespeare's that. He was, he was a great leader, not a very nice guy. but. Um, and there's a mystery about Owen Glyndwr's death, what happened to him. It's a bit like King Arthur, nobody really knows what happened. Um, now, I have a very good school friend, we're still in, we're, we're in regular email correspondence. His name is Griffith Allard Williams. Um, he's a professor. He's had a very distinguished uh, career as, as an expert on uh, Cumbric history in, in Wales, in Ireland. And he, uh, in 2017, he wrote a book called The Last Days of Winklandua. And he did some fantastic research on really what, a mystery, what happened to him? You know, there was a legend that he just, Owen had just wandered from cave to cave and the poor farmers gave him a shelter and he just died possibly as a lonely, broken old man. Um, Aled has more or less, um, I think, scotched that idea. Glyndua had daughters had family in a county called Herefordshire, which is on the border of uh, present-day Cymru in England, and uh, they sheltered him. They sheltered him. They kept him hidden. I think he was offered a pardon, 
but um, it's a mystery where he's actually where he actually died. It's a bit like um, there were grave diggers, grave people, so they would bury him and then dig him up and move of him to escape from the sensation seekers. Uh, and um, here is the book um, by my friend Alid, uh, which he, he sent to me. Uh, so again, for Indonesians who are hi hi interested in Indi Ponogoro and the freedom, all the freedom fighters uh, against Dutch colonialism, again, he is an inspiration. I have written a poem called Glinda Pinnock. Glinda Ponogoro, which compares the two heroes. Um, now, okay, so uh, not long after that, uh, we had the Wars of the Roses in Britain, and it ended with uh, a so-called Welsh uh, leader called Henry Tudor becoming King Henry VII of England, and his son was the more famous Henry VIII, who was basically a slob, uh, uh, he, he's, he's, con he's considered a bit of a hero, but he was a, he was a slob, and they did nothing for the Cymru. They they enacted an act where it was uh, illegal to speak Cymru and uh, all kinds of things. So they, the Tudors didn't do much for Cymru. Uh, now, towards the end of the 18th century, or in the 18th century, there was a revival of interest in ancient Cymric culture. Um, and the, the nationalized death would, began to be held, uh, as I said earlier on. So uh, um, now the English, I'm sorry, did tend to marginalize uh, Cymric culture. There was a guy called Bishop Stubbs, who, um, and uh, they did pretty awful things. They tried to discourage the speaking of Welsh by the children in school by having something called a Welsh knot, which was a big block of wood. And if a child was heard speaking Welsh, they would place this block of wood over the child until the next ch child was heard speaking Welsh, and so they would move in. It was called the Welsh knot. They did a lot to try and eradicate the Cymraeg. Uh, there's been a revival. Uh, and. I th um, the number of uh, come, speakers of Cymraeg is, is holding on. I'm not sure if it's growing, but it's not. Um, it's certainly not dimin diminishing to a great extent. Uh, it is a beautiful language. It's, it's rather difficult for the, um, as I said, from the vowels or the grammar. It's a really beautiful language, and let's hope it can be preserved. And as um, in the song you'll hear at the end, um, the, the Welsh... Uh, Folk singer says that we, we're still going to be here, uh, meaning the Cymru, till the Day of Judgment, with our language and our history. Uh, uh, now, I myself um, don't have much Cymru blood. Uh, I'm more of a scouse from Birkenhead, from Liverpool, but I was brought up in North Wales, and I do love the place. And uh, I do appreciate the culture. And for a nation of only three million, three million, uh, Cymru has supplied some of the world's greatest poets. So we can talk about David Jones, uh, Dylan Thomas. Many of you have heard of Dylan Thomas, and it was in a, a science fiction movie. Do not go gentle into that good night. Uh, an amazing poet and with an amazing voice. R.S. Thomas, not so well known, but also a great poet. Uh, what about the actors? Richard Burton, yeah? One of the greatest actors ever, with a beautiful voice. Any Anything on YouTube by Richard Burton, listen to, listen to his, his, his wonderful um, oratory. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, we, most of us all know, another you know, great actor. Michael Sheen's coming up, another, another great actor with a, a wonderful facility for speaking Kamaraik. Uh Musicians, we've got the classical people, lots of classical people, um, Catherine Jenkins. And pop singers, Shirley Bassey, who's, I think she's been made a dame now. Uh, great Welsh, Tom Jones, still going. Still Dave Edmonds, Shakin Stevens, all great uh, pop singers, rock singers. And what about the footballers? Now, <laughs> 
many of you will not have heard of, of Billy Meredith. Um, he was uh, he he came from Chirk, which is a village near where I was brought up. But he was the first soccer superstar. He played for both Manchester United and Manchester City, um, and uh, he also was a, an advocate of footballers' rights. You know, getting a, a fair wage. Billy Meredith. So you can see that. Um, let's see. Um, and many of you will not, sadly, have heard of T.G. Jones or Tommy Jones. And yet, Stanley Matthews, um, Dixie Dean, Joe Mercer, say he was the greatest footballer they've ever played with. He played centre-half for Everton and centre-half for Cymru. I'd say Cymru, not Wales, but uh, they still use Wales. I think they're not going to use Wales for the football team very much longer. But uh, T.G. Jones, Tommy Jones. Yeah. Uh, a great, great centre-half, um, like Beckenbauer before his time. Uh, John Charles, probably the greatest of all. John Charles could play in any position on the field. They called him the gentle giant. He was never booked. He only lost his temper once, and I saw that at a game called the Battle of Wrexham, Wales versus Austria, when John's brother Mel was carried off, and John was seen to lose his temper the only time, but uh, uh, he could, um, he played center forward for Juventus in Italy, where he's still remembered as one of the greatest overseas players to ever play in Italy, and he played center half for Wales. Uh, t John Charles, Neville Southall, on his day, the greatest goalkeeper in the world, and he's still now doing a lot for LGBT rights. He's a political activist, God bless him. Ryan Giggs, again, unfortunately, um, uh, accused of beating his wife, so that's not good, but uh, a great player. And Gareth Bale, who was uh, recently uh, a big, the, 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 the latest Cumric superstar. Right. Now, um, yes, as I said, uh, I was brought up in Wales in a village called Ron Casolte. Um, and is famous for two things. One is an aqueduct, which was constructed in uh, 1799 by a great engineer called Thomas Telford. Now, this was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Britain was the first country to uh, start the Industrial Revolution using coal, using iron, uh, to develop industry. And Telford was um, built this marvelous aqueduct to carry a canal across the valley of the River Dee, uh, Dovey, in, um, uh, it's now uh, one of the, uh, it's, it's considered the most popular UNESCO world, visited world site. So eat your hearts out, Borobudur, and call what? Um, and uh, we, were, we were brought up, uh, we lived in the village of Toronto, we, it was a quick way of going to the cinema, just crossing, um, you know, high above the valley, being across it in a blizzard, rather dangerous, and it's very spectacular. And uh, Vron is also famous for the Vron Choir, which is one of the world's greatest choir, a male voice choir. I can't imagine any other country with a village um, this, of the size of Vron uh, being so prominent on the world stage. Uh, so, uh, and I, I urge you to go on YouTube, just type in Vron Choir and you'll get, get uh, some good choral, male choral uh, singing. Uh, they, they joke it's the oldest boy band in the world. Uh, some of my friends were in the, in the choir um, and uh, I think they're still going strong. Um, 